True Crime Dropouts may contain some graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hi guys, you're listening to True Crime Dropouts. I'm Vanessa. And I'm Mary. And today, my case is pretty freaking short. It's probably the shortest I've done since Clashendra Hall. Um... And it's a little, of course, dabbling in my profession, unsolved. Mm -hmm. Your fave, your fave. (laughs) My fave. So today we're going to be talking about the mysterious death of Todd Geib. Mm -hmm. So I don't have really anything in, like, background for this guy. I don't know when he was born, where he was born, none of that. I just know that at the time of this case, he was... A 22-year-old guy, just normal schmegular dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was said that he was smart. Um, he loved the outdoors. Like, he liked fishing, hunting, you know, typical guy stuff. Um, he had worked at a place called Haggard Distribution, and he lived in Casanova, Michigan. That's literally all I know. Mm-hmm. So, on to what we all came for. Yeah. So on Saturday, June 11th, 2005, everything seemed to be fairly normal for Todd. He went to visit his parents back home um, and, you know, just kind of chill with them for a bit. Um, he. Uh, hold on. Yeah, he went and hanged out with his, his parents. Then he went back to his place and he just kind of, you know, just was there until about like 730 at night. Mm hmm. At that time, he decided to go out with some friends to the Half Moon Bar and Grill. And the group would all just, you know, just have drinks, have some food, and they'd all hang out at this place until about 930. So the reason for them leaving was because they had found out that there was a party at this, uh, like, nearby orchard. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, like, the woods. So they decided, you know, like, why not? Let's, Let's go. So... Obviously, it seemed to be a good time for all these, like, college-age students, or, you know, people. There, Everyone's drinking. There's, a, like, a little bit of dancing. People are just hanging out, you know, just having a good time on a week night, you know, just whatever. At about 1245, it said that a group of guys had arrived to this orchard party and decided to pick a fight with some other people hmm. at this party, right? Mm-hmm. So now there's just this, like, big fight. Todd decides at this point, I don't want to be part of this. I'm heading out. Yeah, I'm dipping. I'm dipping. Yeah. So from what I know, where the party was located in this little vicinity of the woods to where Todd lived was roughly a mile and a half away southeast of this location. So he could just like walk home. So one person actually recalls seeing later, uh, he he or she recalls seeing Todd walk out of like the area that they were in, into the road, headed southeast towards the direction of his house. As Todd is leaving, he makes a series of phone calls. Okay. Okay. The first phone call he makes to one of his friends whom he rode to the bar with at about 1247 and tells him, you know what? I like just had enough for tonight. Like, I just need to go home. I don't want to be part of this like fight, whatever. Mm -hmm. At about 1251, he calls another friend who was at the party with him. I think I'm not positive. And then told that friend that he was in some field somewhere. And the call cuts off. That's weird. Yeah. So this friend obviously is like, what the hell? Like, uh, this, you know, I'm kind of worried now. So Mm -hmm. this friend tries to call Todd's phone a couple of times. So the first time that Todd would pick up, this person said that it sounded like it was either like, wind or some kind of heavy breathing in the into the phone and then it would just like cut off okay and then they would try to call todd again but todd wouldn't answer okay 
So for the next few minutes, Todd's phone would still be active. We can only assume Todd is trying to call that friend back. Yeah. Like, hey, like this call keeps getting like dropped. Like, I don't know what's going on. Whatever. That's what we can just assume. We we don't know. The last phone call is roughly at about tw- uh, 12.57 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And we don't know if anyone ever really picked up or who he was calling. In a couple of different articles, I had seen that he tried to call like his sister at one point. But that's really all we know. Okay. And that would be the last time Todd would use his phone. Now, when Todd did not appear to his home later that day, and no one was able to get a hold of him from his phone, obviously his friends and family knew, like, Some, something's not right, you know? So for the next few days, over five, 1,500 people would gather trying to find Todd, doing ground searches, bringing in dogs, mm-hmm. just trying to figure out, like, what the hell happened to this dude? Where's Todd? Where is Todd? So they couldn't find anything. Like, they couldn't find, like, a wallet, a shoe, nothing other than a small little clue from the search dogs. Okay. The dogs were able to find or follow uh, Todd's scent from the location of the party up into the edge of the highway on Moon Road headed towards his house. And then it suddenly disappears. Hmm. So it's like right on, right on that corner where he's got to turn, mm-hmm. scent just drops. It's gone. And how far is like that, that the, where he was to Moon Road? So it's kind of like there's like a big road. Think of it kind of like 1960 here, mm-hmm. like giant road. And usually there's like a businesses on one side and then there's like random forest on the other. Mm-hmm. So think of that foresty area, like where the party is. Okay. Just like on the side of the road, it's fairly close. Okay. And he just kind of walks across the, the street or the road and heads to his house. Okay. So not very far. So following the days of the search, there had, you know, because there's there's like a lake near the this foresty area where the, the party was at. Mm-hmm. So there's obviously, like, people on canoes, people are fishing, you know, people are just, like, having picnics, and they don't, like, see anything weird there either. You know, they're just kind of like, okay, it looks like it does any other day, like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Until 21 days later, after Todd went missing, a couple was hanging out near the Old Hall Lake. Mm Mm-hmm. And they see something a little strange in in the water. Uh Uh-oh. And they're thinking maybe like, oh, it's probably like someone dropped something in like the lake. Maybe it's like a like a cooler. I don't know. So they get closer and they get closer to this thing. And they're just like frozen in their tracks. Mm -hmm. There in the water was Todd's dead body. Mm. But here's the creepier part of it. His body was standing upright. Head and shoulders out of the water, standing upright. Oh, heck no. I'd Mm. shit myself. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so, obviously, like, they're just like, "Uh, okay, we gotta call police. Like, this is, this is weird. So at the start of the investigation, after his body was found, police had theorized that maybe Todd had too much to drink at this party, got lost trying to head home, and then, quote unquote, took a swim in the lake. Mm. I don't know about that. Exactly. Todd had been found fully clothed with his phone and his wallet still in his pocket. Yeah. Todd's mother, Kathy, didn't think that any of this made any sense. No. Todd, for one, knew the area very, very well because it was close to his home. And there had been accounts from other people at the party recalling had seen Todd walking 
in the direction of his house, not mm-hmm. in the direction of the woods. Because the lake was a little bit north of the location of where their party was at, and his house was south. Okay. And obviously, they're like, no, he didn't walk into the woods. We saw him walk into the street. Yeah. But it was found out that Todd had a blood alcohol level of 0.12. So because of this, police and investigators were like, well, our theory is right. He was just too drunk and, and, and drowned. Mm-hmm. So they ruled it an accidental drowning. Mm. I don't know about that. Exactly. But there are things in the autopsy that didn't make any sense to this theory from police. Mm -hmm. In the autopsy, it had been discovered that Todd had two different drugs in his system. One being disipramine and the other one being antripoline, both which are used to treat chronic depression in general. Now, Todd was not known to have any kind of mental illness or suffer from depression. He didn't even have a prescription for these drugs. So they were kind of like, how the hell did he get these things, right? Yeah. And it doesn't sound like something you just take at a party. Exactly. And that was another thing that kind of was just like, like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Now, from what I could find online these two drugs are usually prescribed separately because they're practically the same thing they do pretty much the same thing Mm -hmm. and if someone were to take them together it could literally have a life-threatening um effects on a person Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people particularly his mother thinks that maybe someone crushed these pills down and like spiked his drink so the autopsy would on, also report that there was no sign of any insects on his body, which if he was in the water for a prolonged period of time, there would be evidence of that. Mm-hmm. But there was none. So another, where was his body being kept? Up, but here's another thing. The most telling piece of evidence is that there was absolutely no water found in his lungs whatsoever. Yeah. They can't so, even claim. So how would you, yeah, so how would you rule that a drowning? Exactly. Exactly. Now, in regards to his time of death, the there was a medical examiner and then various forensic pathologists that kind of like came together. And they all agreed that Todd's body was not dead for more than two or three days. Okay. Prior to being discovered. Okay. But even with this, police and investigators still ruled it some kind of accidental drowning, right? And claimed that his body had been in this lake for 21 days. And Michigan State Police was like, okay, we're closing this case. That's That's it. That's all all we're doing. Right? So, you may ask, if none of this makes sense, what the hell is wrong with Michigan State Police and what the hell happened to Todd? Yeah. So, we might never know because it's unsolved and there's really not a lot to go off of. Mm -hmm. But there are two little theories that float around the internet as to what may have happened to Todd. Obviously, the first one we've kind of already talked about in which Todd had been drugged by someone, maybe at the party. And people theorize that, like, the fight at the party was some kind of distraction Mm -hmm. to get Todd drugged so that he would be like, oh, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm too effed up. And then, boom, he gets killed. But we don't, as far as I know and as far as I could find, no one ever suspected Todd to have like any kind of enemies or like issues with anyone. So I feel like this probably wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But I mean, who knows? And then our second theory is the most popular theory. And it's literally like the only thing you'll ever see on the internet when you Google his name is that a lot of people believe that Todd was a victim of the smiley face killer slash killers. Now, for those who are unfamiliar with the smiley face killers, Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's pretty much a theory that there's this group of possible murderers who obviously no one knows, but are possibly responsible for the deaths of roughly 45 college aged young men in the Midwest area of the U.S. going as far back as the mid 90s. Now, all of these men are found kind of roughly in similar circumstances. All of these men are between like 18 and like 25 years old. They're mm-hmm. all white. They all were last seen at a party or at a bar with friends drinking. And they were all found either in water or near water after various days of being missing. Now, the reason for the smiley face part of the name is because in a good amount of the crime scenes where these bodies were found, there's like a graffiti smiley face near the bodies. Yeah. So they kind of like play into like maybe this is like who this group's signature or whatever. Um, but a lot of people kind of be like, they'll they'll say like, oh, a smiley face graffiti is so common. You can probably walk to the corner of your house and see one kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but as far as I could find, there wasn't a smiley face graffiti near the lake where he was found. But sometime in 2008, Kathy, Todd's mother, would go and visit his grave and discover a smiley face sticker on Todd's grave. I'd be pissed. And so having heard these of these murders, she kind of was like, okay, this is see, seeming a, a little bit kind of like sus. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I, maybe I have a feeling that this group has something to do with my son's death. So in 2019, she would kind of finally be heard with her little theory and would get help from a group of experts uh, compiled of some former NYPD detectives and one criminal justice professor who were pretty much creating a show with oxygen called the smiley face killers, the hunt for justice. So these these guys are like they come together and they're like talking about these like unsolved cases that all seem very much familiar and they're trying to tie it in to the smiley face killer theory. So in the episode that I watched of Todd's case, the group obviously is coming together and they're trying to prove whatever the police is saying wrong. Like, this isn't an accidental drowning. Mm -hmm. He didn't just walk into this lake, you know, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, they already have the the evidence from the search dogs where his scent isn't being headed towards the lake, but to, towards his house. We're in completely different directions. Yeah. And they take a look at the two drugs that were in his system. The pharmacist that they kind of get in touch with tells them pretty much the same thing. You know, these two drugs aren't prescribed together usually. It's not something that people take for fun, like um, like Xanax or something like that. It's yeah. not one of those drugs. It's not so Molly. It's possible. Yeah, so it's possible someone may have, like, crushed it, you know, drugged him, whatever. Yeah. And then they try to pretty much like trace his steps into being like, okay, if I was this intoxicated with this kind of blood level, would I be able to make it to this kind of rough terrain into a lake? And they pretty much are like, well, there's no way because this, he would have had to have like a lot of bruising on his body. He may have tripped a couple of times because it's not very easy terrain to walk in. He's really drunk and drugged from these prescription pills yeah so obviously they concluded that this probably wasn't the case he probably didn't walk into the lake like they're saying and they were also able to kind of do their own little experiment in 
trying to prove the theory from police that his body had been in the lake for 21 days prior to being discovered. Mm -hmm. Now, they were able to come together with a forensic entomologist and uh, another medical examiner. And so they took the bodies of like two pigs because like pig carcasses are very similar to like human like their skin and the way they decompose is very similar to the way that like we decompose. So they take two um, pig bodies, one that they just like straight up, they leave in the lake for 21 days Mm -hmm. and another, which they like concurrently, like they kind of like take it every once in a while out of the water and then they put it back in. Mm -hmm. And so they dress up the pigs in clothing similar to Todd's and they just, you know, they're putting them in the lake and they're like, Hey, we're going to make an experiment because if, his body was in the lake for 21 days. There had to be bugs on him. And he probably would have been very, very decomposed. Yeah. Right? Because it's June. It's hot. Yeah. So in, in, in the time that this is happening, you know, they come back with, like, pictures and video and everything to show th- these former NYPD detectives that are doing this show. And... With the body, like both bodies of these pigs pretty much decomposed fairly much the same, not too much of a difference. Mm -hmm. With just like two days of being in the water, their bodies had completely floated to this to the surface from all the bloat. And like if his body was in there for 21 days, his body would have been floating, not standing upright. Yeah, upright, like. Come on, that doesn't make sense. And after 21 days, like, the pig carcass was practically, like, mush. Yeah, you get the skin starts. Yeah, like, it was just complete from mush. the bodies and stuff. Literally, the only thing that was keeping, like, skin intact was the clothing. Yeah. And so they were like, there's no way. There's no way in the world that his body had been in this like 21 days and not look like this. Mm -hmm. They also take a look at um, like the bug situation with the forensic entomologist. And after like three days of being in the water, there was already like eggs and larva of like different kinds of insects from that lake already on his body, in his mouth. And after 21 days, the pig's body were, like, just covered in maggots. Oh. And when they had found Todd's body, they didn't have any of that. Mm -hmm. There was, like, really no bugs sticking to his body. There wasn't anything inside. The clothing didn't have eggs or larvae, nothing. So they were pretty much like, okay, his body had to be kept somewhere for roughly... 18 to 20 days prior to killing him and then they had to have dumped his body either like the day prior or hours before being discovered because it was like his body was practically fresh in the water yeah so they take all of this information together and they're like okay like we have a feeling 1000 percent that this was a homicide yeah. This was not an accidental drawing. It did drowning. not seem like an accident drawing at all. Yeah, at all. So the mother, Kathy, decides, okay, I feel like now I have evidence. So she goes and submits a request to the county prosecutor to change uh, either the status of his case or to reopen his case. Okay. And so, obviously, the counter prosecutor is like, well, I need evidence of your stuff that you're claiming. Yeah. So, apparently, like, all these guys from the show and the mother, are, like, all submitted this information. And it said that they're supposedly now looking at it as a homicide, but we're not really sure if the case is reopened. I couldn't find any updates as of, like, February of 2020. Um, so I don't really know what's going on here. Really, the smiley face killer situation could be its own podcast. Like, there is so much in it and so many unsolved deaths that are linked to this that it's insane. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, the, the scariest part of this whole thing is just him standing upright. Yeah, that's that's, that's horrifying. That's the stuff of nightmares. Of it, the yeah, the image of it kept me up at night. Ugh. It was it's terrifying. There's a picture? Um, no, there's, well, there's like, um, a, a computer oh, okay. rendered image of it, but like, I mean, still you look the at thought. that and you like imagine it and you're like, Oh God. Yeah. Even the thought is terrifying. Yeah. This dead body standing upright in the water. Mm-hmm. But. Just imagine being my, the person stumbling upon that. I would probably vomit mm-hmm. and poop myself and scream and then mm-hmm. never sleep again. Yeah. Just terrifying. So that's my case. Um, yeah. I, I just, I don't know what happened to this man. Poor Todd. Honestly. And as far as I know, like his mother on the show on, on in the episode was like, he had such a promising life and he was so excited for his future. And I'm just like, oh, don't you just hate that? Yeah. So, and he was young, 22, like, jeez. Yeah. So, so sad. I'm hoping that these people are like, oh, yeah, we were dumb. This was not an accidental drowning. And mm-hmm. reopen his case and try to figure out what happened to him. Because They really need to. It's a small town. I mean, something, someone's got to know something. Mm-hmm. So. Someone always uh, knows. Someone always knows something. Honestly. So I'm going to be keeping my eye out on updates and seeing if there's anything that comes up. But I'm really hoping. I mean, they reopened Kendrick Kendrick's case. So Yeah, they did. I'm hoping they reopen this one or something. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. Once they have more on Kendrick's, we're going to do a, a update episode. An update episode for sure. Because mm-hmm. so far, pretty much what they're... Their evidence was is kind of like what we mentioned, the theory of the, the two kids. Yeah, with the FBI so, mm-hmm. agent for her father and stuff. Yeah. So I guess we'll see. We'll definitely be keeping our eyes on out on that one, too. Mm-hmm. So that's my case, and I'll see you guys next week. Yeah, with we Something will know. a little more answerable. <laughs> Maybe. 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 <laughs> all right guys bye bye thanks for listening if you'd like more content like you just heard add us on patreon.com forward slash true crime dropouts you can also follow us on facebook and instagram at true crime dropouts and don't forget you can find us on apple Podcasts, youtube spotify and more if we aren't on your favorite streaming service let us know and we will see what we can do stay in school